uh, VAR. Ooh, I saw your tweets. You're you're on fire with your tweets around it, and it's not going away, is it? I mean. No. And people I think are it's still a talking about it. Yeah. I think it's a There's disgrace. some people though that want to move on. Like, no. Move on, shut up, get on with it. No, I think it's yeah. I think it's a really bad way to approach this. You know, the, the two things that can happen with regard to this VAR debate that really doesn't help football is if you try and position it as one a tribal issue. If you try and position it as being like a Liverpool thing, a Liverpool problem, mm. you are doing the game a disservice. This isn't about tribalism. All football fans need to back Liverpool here. All football fans need to say Liverpool deserve whatever they deserve out of this game because this is your opportunity to make as much noise as possible and hopefully right the wrong. Because what we witnessed with that VAR conversation, it was a travesty, wasn't it? It was absolutely comical. If it wasn't so tragic, if it wasn't so significant, it would be a comedy. Yeah, it was. A, it literally was a comedy. Like, I mean, all football fans, I think even some Spurs fans would admit that the mistake was incredible. Mm. Like, like, so bad. Then when you hear the audio, you, you actually think it's a joke. The sheer panic in their yeah. voices. It's bad, they were caught. It? They didn't know what to do. They froze. And you know when, whatever profession you work in, your responsibility as a professional in any capacity is to to earn your money when things are going wrong. Yeah, it's easy. I mean, let's it's be easy honest. I mean, how many, how many VAR decisions are there in a game, r- roughly? I'd, lo- I'd love to know the stats. And I'm going to say about 10. Right, and and, and 90% of them 90% are clear-cut. Easy, yeah, you don't even look at them. Yeah. They're, they're done in and out, and we don't even know they're happening, mm. you know, until the commentator says, oh, of our decisions actually currently ongoing. So most times, one or two a game are going to have to be studied. Yes. So for 90 minutes, you've got two, or two, two, of issues. two issues that you've got to resolve and resolve them correctly. Yeah, and they got it so wrong. It was yeah. painful. And then do you know the thing that just infuriated me? You know when they start talking about the protocol? Mm. Well, the game has started. The, the free kick has been taken. Therefore, according to protocol, we have to allow the game to run and there's nothing we can do. They're constantly saying, well, there's nothing I can do. Of course you can break protocol when the circumstance dictates it. You're allowed... Like, in theory, whatever you're supposed to do in theory is only that. It's in theory, not in practice. So when something as catastrophic as a perfectly good goal for a 10-man team away at an informed Tottenham is wrongly chalked out, you need to do the right thing here. You need to be a hero and not just sit there and relax on protocol. It's ridiculous. Well, we're going to talk about the um, the changes that start this weekend as a result of that calamity. Um, before we do that, though, very quickly, Klopp speaking about a replay. Yes. I-, I think he said tongue-in-cheek. Mm? I-, I think he said it tongue-in-cheek. I don't think he, he really meant it because he knows it isn't going to happen. What is the best possible outcome of this? Like, what's the extreme that would benefit everyone and what's most realistic I will read out the changes very quickly but I want to get so, your so realistically uh, it won't happen no, it's totally so. impractical we cannot have a replay the replay mm. will not happen however I am backing I am unilaterally I am in a partisan way aggressively supporting the idea the concept of a replay I don't th- I don't think it can happen mm. but I am making as much noise as possible saying that a replay could happen because it's our way of kicking up a fuss it's our way of making our voices well, what heard What about those devil's advocate here who started tweeting you've seen the tweets oh let's replay the Champions League final then let's go back to Sheffield United okay. and Aston Villa but, let's replay everything okay, but this is this is the problem as soon as you start doing that you do a disservice because you are removing you are removing the severity of this issue yeah. and you are passing it on and you're and you're asking for something that is impossible what we all need to do and and the other thing that you're doing there by the way, you're making it tribal. Well, we had a bad decision. When Luis Garcia scored a goal at Anfield and I was in that stadium, I was heartbroken in the away end. I'm not asking for that to be replayed, but I am backing this as a replay, even though I know it won't happen, simply because something needs to be done. And we should all back this idea. We should all come together. Every football fan should remove any tribalism, come together and back the idea and back what's going on. Because this is our opportunity to actually make a statement and change what is such a catastrophic system that removes so much from the game. Yeah. What about the idea of no VR anymore? I like that idea. Yeah. When you think like, about what... We speak I, to, I speak to fans in EFL, obviously like no mm. VR in EFL, and they love it. And mm. then when you ask them, even with you know tight decisions, decisions that you think were wrong, would you get VAR in... So those decisions are always perfect, always correct. They're like, absolutely not. No, because what VAR was supposed to do, it never did. We were sold a dream. And in theory, VAR should solve problems, but it doesn't. It creates more problems than it than it solves. And crucially, what you get with VAR is you remove something that is so so intrinsically brilliant about football, something that is so, so important and should be preserved at all costs. And that is that spontaneous moment of joy. That is what is robbed from us 
by VAR. You know when uh, when your team score a last minute winner away from home and you go potty in an away end, you celebrate unbridled joy. That sh- that moment of true jubilation when you're celebrating, you hurt your shins because you've gone over the seat in front of you. You're cuddling a stranger. It's pandemonium. That is football. And that buzz that we are all chasing, we all follow our teams, home and away and abroad, spend loads and loads of money doing it, dedicate our time to doing it. Effectively, the reason that we're doing it is chasing that buzz. And VAR has removed that from football. You cannot celebrate in the way that you once could Mm. because there is something now that is not final about seeing the ball hit the back of the net. Yeah, you are correct. Uh, TalkSport understands as well, by the way, the PGMOL and the Premier League have committed to a regular release of in-game audio of the on-field officials and VAR teams with another episode of Match Officials mic'd up Aaron on Tuesday. Howard Webb and Michael Owen will once again explain refereeing decisions from the recent match arounds using match footage and previously unreleased audio between the on-field officials and VAR teams. What do you make of that? I mean, I think it. I think it's a start. I think mm. it's a start. I don't think we necessarily need to hear these conversations. No. I think that we've we've been. You know, the door has I'm, been. I'm scared ajar. to hear them. I know. I'm scared to hear we them. We now realise the sheer shambolic nature and the ineptitude of the people making these decisions. And it's all very well to go. You know, Darren England's removed from all Liverpool games for the rest of the season. I mean, that's ridiculous. That's truly wild. Because what that does is it sort of opens up a can of worms. Can other clubs start lobbying to have referees removed from their games? Mm. Like, if this bloke isn't fit to referee Liverpool games, then fine. But that means he's not fit to referee Chelsea games either. Agreed. If he's not fit to referee for Liverpool, if Liverpool have decided that this bloke cannot be trusted to referee our games, then I'm afraid I would expect that courtesy to be extended to every other team in the Premier League. Because if he isn't fit for purpose for them... I'm afraid he's not fit for purpose for us. Yeah, well, it might be fit for purpose for Saudi Arabian League. Obviously, they, they clearly want all the Premier League referees. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.